Good morning. We are going to the Southampton Boat Show and I'm late for my train, so let's get going. I'm gonna make my way to the station on this little thing that I bought when I got here because our car is in Italy. So I've got a little folding bike for the boat. Super handy, uh, weighs 13 kilos and it was nice and cheap as well from Argos in the UK if anybody's interested. That was a nice early morning workout. The roads were quiet, really nice to cycle here. There's the castle and the cathedral, and I'm just waiting for the late train to go into London with all the commuters, so it's probably going to be very busy. I like travelling on trains actually. When I was in the RAF, I used to travel a lot on the trains, really enjoyed it. And I'm going to be trying to sort out a kind of chart plotter system on the train today. I bought a cheap Android tablet, and I'm going to be downloading OpenCPN and get myself a little cheap plotter set up. I absolutely love London. This is um, Mel Rosella and I met, so it's very special to us. And there's such an amazing energy in this city. I really do enjoy visiting. Emma, look. Hi. This is good, isn't it, Emma? Daddy's with you in the bath, even though I'm in a different country. Yes, darling, I'm on the train. I'm on the train and you're in the bath. Well, I've only been here maybe 15 minutes and I'm already really impressed. Really impressed. Uh, some really interesting things here. Halyards and different lines and they're half price. That's not an inflated price, then half price. It's a kind of, you know, a decent price and you only pay half so that's good for us because we need new lines on Brittany. SUPs, we've got an SUP there 225 quid that's a good price and there's something else that I've seen that I've never seen before which I'll show you now. Despite the fact that I used to be a boat dealer and we sold trailerable boats and trailers I've never seen this before. Stainless steel boat trailers. I haven't asked prices or anything like that, I'm sure they're going to be expensive as you would expect but yeah really quite innovative. Of course it's nice to be able to uh, to dunk the trailer and um, with galvanized trailers you know that's doable but no doubt in the longer term stainless steel trailers will be a great option. Again I don't know the price but I've just never seen it so I thought I'd show you. I was just walking past the Coast Guard stand here and I saw something that I recognised. The Naughty Nav boys. We had them recently in a giveaway and we've given away five sets of those to people. This is a very large boat show, there are over 600 boats here and about 100,000 visitors during the course of the show. It's not just boats though, there are other things. Here's a trailer. I'm always tempted by that sort of thing, whether it be building a teardrop trailer or doing a camper van conversion. It'd be nice to have options for extra accommodation, like for example now while, we're, while I'm working on the boat, it'd be really nice to have somewhere where Rosella and Emma could stay and um, yeah, something like that or a camper van would be very handy. And if you come back at 1.30, I'm going in. I'm going in, I weigh twice as much as he does, 
they are going to do the commentary and Emily will get out. Now look at the way she's managing to lift him up the side. You'll notice she's holding him between finger and thumb. All this way, finger and thumb. That's because we're using a special tackle developed by Harkin for their main sheet uh, pivots, uh, which has ratcheted blocks in it. That is how you can get a man back on the floor, but that does not start unless you've got one of those in the life jacket, which you couldn't get down to. Let's do it. Well, that was cool. I've just met Dan from uh, Sailing Uber. I didn't get the camera out because I wanted to say hello to him, you know. Oh, hi. Here's a camera in your face. So, um, yeah, it's really nice to meet him and hear a little bit of their plans as well. Now, time is marching on and in 12 minutes I've got to be at the Guinness Bar because that's where I said I was going to be from 12 till 3. So, it's time for me to get off the pontoons and go and have a Guinness. And I mean one Guinness, I'm only having one. Um, but it'll be really nice to stay there. I've, I've put word out so hopefully somebody will be there, some of our viewers, and I can meet them and say hello. Just walking over to the Guinness bar and I bumped into Dan again and Kika this time. That was five pound fifty. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <sighs> you will notice the lack of crowd. I am here on my own, twiddling my thumbs. So hopefully, someone will come and say hello soon. If they don't, that's all right. I've got you guys. Well, the first person has been to say hello, Nick. Cheers, Nick. Um, so yeah, I've not been a complete Billy No Mate. But yeah, I've only been here about 15 minutes and it's a really nice atmosphere. Glorious sunny day. It's about 23 degrees C today, which is just fantastic for the end of September. That's just wonderful. Well, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. I've not been um, on camera for a while because there's been lots going on. Brian from Delos was here as well and he gave a, a really interesting talk about their, their cruising and yeah it's just been nice to see some other people who understand what it's like to be the other side of the editing screen yeah really inspirational people as well so let's go and have a look around Boats here to suit all tastes, motorboats, sailing boats, very big and very small, and the fact that it's here on the water, it feels a lot less like a kind of static display. It's more of a live event and it feels more real. Okay guys, it's time for some dreaming here. We're going to have a look at a Halberg Rassi 57. There are the stats. Swedish boat, of course. Which way do you want to go? Very nice area there for all your toys. It's like a garage, isn't it, of a house. Men always want to see what the garage is like. And on a boat, your lazarettes and storage areas are, are what we want to see. Hello there. Hello, nice engine room. Can I just stick my camera in there yes, as well, please? Right wow. <laughs> Very nice. Gigantic Cummins generator. Yeah, just mm. And this aft cabin. This is Sorry. Yeah. I'm selling the house. 
Wow. There's a Halberg Rassi 340 as well, which for me feels a little bit more realistic. That kind of size boat, the 57, that's just so far outside my comfort zone that it almost feels unbelievable. I don't know if you kind of catch my drift. Anybody who's maybe been on a really large boat like that might understand a little bit of what I mean, but a 34 foot, for example, that feels a lot more manageable stroke achievable stroke possible wow beautiful classic design yeah there's the world premiere of the oyster 565 Again, these kind of boats for me are so far removed from reality that my brain can't really process them. They're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Let's go and have a look at something a little bit smaller, shall we? Azuma, 1972 Pearson 36. Dan and Kika, lovely couple. Put a lot of work into this boat and they deserve all the success in the world. Kitty Wake 14, that's a pretty boat, isn't it? This has been out in the bay taking people sailing. This is interesting to me because I saw this earlier on and I was imagining what it might be like to sail it. And here we have someone doing just that. So this is a, a new, brand new product which is going to be sold in Decathlon, which is just a kind of a sports store that has branches around Europe. It's an inflatable sailing boat which fits in a car it's kind of like a, a very large SUP almost in design with a couple of detachable keels in a kind of bilge keel configuration underneath and it actually seems to sail pretty well so these are all children out here sailing there's a safety boat there of course and the little boy in charge of that decathlon does it say tribord 5s he's probably around nine years old I would say doing a grand job. Seek and you shall find. I posed a question earlier and the universe has just answered it. Very tiny little boat, quarter berth there, centre board, nice shallow draft for getting up all the little creeks and nooks and crannies, you can explore pretty much anywhere in a boat like this. Very tidy, British made boat. Solid traditional rudder design there. He has huge balls, I know. He's a bit big for his breed. He's um, a 21 foot Cornish shrimper here. You can see 
see on both of these boats how the mast holds down both for trailering and also for going under bridges potentially this show runs for around 10 days I think I could spend 10 days here and still not really see all the things that I want to see however life is busy I'm only here for the day I've got a three hour train ride I had a three hour train ride to get here three hours back that doesn't leave me long in the middle but I'm doing my best for you that's heartwarming to see a little girl on an SUP picking up a plastic bottle out of the water Let's go and have a look around on this tall ship then, shall we? For me, this is a bloke's dream. Beautiful vessel. I would absolutely love to go sailing on a ship like this. It's very, very nice. The rigging on this is absolutely beautiful. It's fabulous that these skills are being kept alive. The human race has probably lost a lot of knowledge over the past couple of centuries. You know, we've gained a lot, but when it comes to seamanship and carpentry skills, uh, I don't know how much progress we've made, to be honest. Perhaps we've even gone backwards in some respects. A big capstan. They would have put long levers into these holes. And then we would have had a bunch of guys pushing around to rotate the capstan to bring up the chain or whatever it was that they wanted to put under tension. They've got these latches at the bottom, so you know, either go one direction or the other, and they stop it from slipping backwards. Simple, beautiful, and very functional. Well, it's time to buy some stuff just before the show closes. As you know, Brittany is in a bit of a state all the running rigging is very very old very dirty some of it is damaged i've been inspecting it you've got an external cover and then within that you've got the strength most of the strength is in the core and i've seen on some of our halyards they've thinned out so you can see by the diameter of the line it comes down and then it gets thinner and then it goes out again so lines like that must be replaced so i've come here with a bit of a list and i've got myself a whole bunch of new halyard lines I've never heard of this company before, Rotor Marine. The prices here are really interesting. I think I mentioned it before, but basically just pick up a line at random. 12 mil, 20 meters, 64 pounds. But at the boat show, you only pay half the price that's displayed on the lines. So it's really interesting. They've got more in lines, all kinds of different lines, you know. They've got a bit of everything, including Dyneema. I'm going to be replacing our lifelines with Dyneema, I believe. In that case, this will be what I need. I'm going to contact the guys and um, make an order further down the line when I've got all my measurements and everything. So there we are. I thought I'd point that out because I've never heard of him and it's quite an interesting company. Well, I just got off the phone to Rossella and uh, she asked me when I ate and uh, it just dawned on me I haven't eaten for 12 hours, 20 minutes. I had two egg and crest sandwiches, 
two like packets, so it's like four sandwiches. Um, about half nine this morning, I've not eaten since, so I'm gonna go and get some food now to give me the energy to cycle for half an hour with this monster on my back. It's 20 to one in the morning. I've got my little backpack on, which uh, is digging in quite nicely to my shoulders. I've got about 30 minutes on the bicycle now. I'm looking forward to going to bed. Not exactly convenient. It's kind of like having two tourniquets, one on each shoulder. But there we are, I'll survive. I've rejigged my jacket to uh, pad out my shoulders. That's a bit better. I could do without these hills though. It's the struggle. Okay, it is 25 past one in the morning and I've been on the go since yesterday morning at four o'clock. So it's been a long day, but very enjoyable, very memorable. And I'm really glad that I went there. As I came through the security barrier there, I was handed a little envelope and I didn't really know what it was from Germany. I thought, what the hell is that? I don't remember ordering that. It is a anti-glare screen protector so before if you're watching this video looking at the little plotter thing and thinking oh it's a bit shiny Chris you're not going to be able to see much of that in the sun yeah this should hopefully help a little bit with that it'll probably need a sun cover as well to be honest you know to give you some shade to see it really well but when it's really bright sunshine not that that's too much of a problem over the next few weeks because it's forecast to be very wet and windy speaking of which we've got to get up early tomorrow and crack on and fit these halyards before all hell breaks loose with the weather so that's enough blabbering from me um, see you next time Ciao.